like that. What's up? It's day two. I got parking spot number one. Lucky. So, I missed the gate. Our park here has a, uh, make sure I got my keys. Our park here has a system that uh, basically is essentially free if you uh, get in before 8 a.m. And I missed it by about two minutes. Cup of Joe, black. So, uh, the other day, I was fishing bait, and we did all right. We were one shy each. A uh, scrub jay screaming over me right now. We were one fish short um, for our limits that day. It kind of sucked, but you know you can't always get your limit. It's okay. Four fish a piece, eight fish. It's a lot of fish. So. I'm coming back today to try a different style. Light line, light lures. I've got a technique that I'm going to show you guys. You see I rigged up a stinger hook because trout are notorious for short biting. Let's walk down to the lake guys. We're the first ones to come fishing. I see a couple cars over there but I, don't, I think they're just joggers. Go see how full the lake is today. As you can see, I am back at Pond 2. It is lightly sprinkling today with scattered clouds, but that makes for awesome trout fishing. I always like days that are a little bit darker, not so much sunlight, to push those trout down deep. This way, the trout will be out swimming around and actively feeding, more likely to bump into my power bait. Once again, I'm starting off simple with a Carolina rig piece of power bait on there. I've got the gulp power bait from the last video that I'm going to be throwing on here. Another pretty fish, rainbow trout, Nijimas in, uh, in Japanese, and he swallowed the hook, so um, we'll be keeping him. Beautiful, look, he's got his pink colors coming in, that's because he's been in here for probably about two weeks now. He's got all kinds of twists for some reason. Some 
bit it earlier. Maybe it's the same guy, maybe not. But I uh, wasn't gonna let it go this time, huh? Oh, my hook's way down there. I was gonna do some catching and releasing today, but this guy swallowed it, so we are catching and eating this guy. In the net, man. I don't want something to happen. There's my hook. There's the bait. Alright. The skunk's off our backs. What I'm going to do here is what we do to all of our fish that we keep. I'm going to slit its throat so that it can die quickly and so that it can bleed out. These trout actually have a surprising amount of blood. It's not too big of a problem because they don't taste that fishy. However, I just like to do it because it does leave the meat cleaner and the fish don't suffer on the stringer. Next up is if you forget your stringer, then you go find a nice green branch that's very flexible and won't break on you. Just make sure it's nice and springy and tie a knot, slip it through the gills, and you're done. Just like that. It's really easy. Make your own stringer. This fish isn't going anywhere. We'll cook them. So I was running out of bait today and I came up with a little technique just on the whim. I was looking for these little tiny marshmallows that people left behind on the shoreline while they were fishing. I think they're usually eaten up by ducks and other stuff living around the area. However, there were enough around that I was able to find one or two here and there that I could peg onto the hook so that I could put a little tiny bit of power bait on there and have it look and still smell really good to the trout. Okay, so fake marshmallow plus power bait combo does work. I had forgotten to mention, but this video did take place about two weeks after they had last stocked the area. That means that these fish were getting a little bit more wild. They were still eating power bait, but they were fighting a lot nicer than they were the other day. I do like fresh trout. Very, very good stuff. I like these really nice and fine hemostats. I don't like the big ones. But these nice and fine, these little ones, they're really good.
And just like earlier, we slit the throat before we put it on the stringer. Whoop! That one's getting away. This guy really does not want to go on the stringer. And so it finally happened. I ran out of power bait. Now, not to worry because that little jig I showed you before is very effective. I'll be fishing that little jig underneath a bobber and in order to do so I'm going to be using a 9 foot medium light rod. I'll tell you why I use such a long rod in a little bit. The float is suspended anywhere between 12 to 18 inches. Here I had it a little bit long so shorten it back to about, about 15 inches away. The reason why is because I am targeting the active fish that are cruising right below the surface looking for bugs and other stuff that falls right into the water. And last of all I've got my little secret, Procure's Gel Sauce. I think this one's Threadfin Shad and although these fish have never eaten a Threadfin Shad in their lives, I think it's pretty universal that they'll eat this stuff. For the most part, it's just protein that they'll be tasting when they bite down on that jig. It really helps a lot. It may not attract more bites, but it just might let them hold on a little bit longer. Earlier in the video I explained you can leave it alone, you can jig it, you can jig it fast, you can jig it slow, give it a couple pauses, just it depends on what the fish want. So on this particular day they wanted either light jigs or they wanted real sharp hits with a pause in between and they would bite it right on the pause. Big trout guys. The biggest one of the day came on a lure. Big aggressive trout like this guy will chase lures oftentimes. And the technique that you saw was modified from crappie fishing. These trout love little white tube jigs also. Just fish them under a float 
give it a couple twitches. Yep. Biggest one of the day. Here he is compared to the other guys. Alright, let's get him ready to go home. Very few spots on this guy, you notice that? Wonder why. Almost looks like a cutthroat. Definitely a rainbow. But almost no spots. The spins are growing back. This fish has been in here two weeks, like I said.